In this movie, we'll pick up right where we left off, getting ready to pull off a fast little production trick to go ahead and create some layered depth in here as we animate this spaceship flying around the moon. Now, as we learned earlier when we were working with the tools, what Anime Studio Pro respects is the stacking order here in the layers palette, which means that if we move this saucer behind the moon, even though, or I should say even with the saucer in front of the moon, we've adjusted our layer depth here. And let's change one of these windows to the top view. We have the saucer flying in front of the moon, and then it goes behind it. Even though the Z space for the saucer is behind the moon, the fact that it occurs in the layer above the moon will make it always visible. The last thing before we get started here, I'm going to go back to time frame zero, is I want this to come closer to the camera so it continues to get smaller and smaller as it moves back. I'll move with our layer movement tool up here, keyboard shortcut one. I'll grab this and simply pull that closer to the camera. So now when we do the flyby and scrub the timeline, we'll see this flying saucer zoom in front of them. And this is where the layer stacking order comes into effect. Even though it's going into negative Z space, it's still showing up in front of the moon. Here's the production trick to prevent that from happening. I'll come back to timeline zero. And actually, since I'm being picky here, let me go ahead and move this closer into our camera view so we don't have to have so many frames rendered without that showing. Maybe right there. We'll scrub that real quick. Animation is always a process of tweaking and adjusting. Okay, there we go. Here's the production trick. With the saucer layer selected, I'll simply choose duplicate layer. I'll double click on this layer and say, let me move this so we can see it. I'll say saucer behind. We'll take this layer and drag it beneath the moon. So now we have two layers with identical animations on them. If we scrub the timeline, you'll see no difference in them. What we're going to do is hide the times that you can see these layers. To do that, we need to activate our settings and we need to turn on layer visibility in case you don't have that checked and select OK. With that item enabled, now we can see down in the timeline controls that we have the little eye icon over here for layer visibility. This is where we can start adding keyframes and making things appear and disappear. Here's how we do it. I want to see the saucer layer, which is saucer front, during the first half of the animation, but I want to hide it as soon as it goes beyond the moon, and I'm just going to do it at this keyframe right here. I'll advance the timeline to 36 frames, which is one and a half seconds. And now in my visibility controls, I'm going to go ahead and actually we're at the saucer behind right here to make sure I've got the right layer selected. This red area means that it's hiding. And what we're seeing in the timeline is only the contents of the saucer behind layer. Let me click again right here in the timeline. And it's one of those kind of binary off and on things. You click once and you get a, a hiding keyframe and click again and you get a revealing or showing keyframe. That's what we've done. I'm going to click on this keyframe and simply drag it back to time frame one and move this keyframe right over to where we have the time marker currently. Let me come back to the saucer and now I'll click right here on the visibility layer again. It will add a keyframe but make everything that occurs beyond that point in time invisible. If we scrub the timeline, we'll see no difference. But notice the saucer as it travels now, it goes behind the moon and disappears. If we're to render that with a quick render, Command R on the Macintosh, Control R on the PC, we'll see that now the saucer is actually behind the moon. Nice little trick. If we want to add an extra touch to this, then what we do is come back to time frame zero, select the saucer layer, and I will double click on the saucer layer. We have the ability now to blur this layer. So we can do kind of a fake type of depth of field here. I'll say let's blur this for a value of 2 and select OK. Now I'm going to come to the center keyframe. I'm going to double click on this layer again. And this is one way to do it. There's another way to do it. For blur, 
I'm going to go ahead and enter a value of 0. So there's no blurring going on. And this means between the time frame at 1 and the time frame at 36, there will be less and less blur, like it's coming into focus in a camera. I'll select OK. Let's go ahead and scrub this timeline just a little bit. I'll render a spot render here. And we can see our little spaceship here is kind of blurring, but as it gets further in, it will finish coming into sharp view and then go behind the moon. Let's go ahead and render out our entire animation real quick. We'll come down to Export Animation. I want to export this out for me as a QuickTime movie. I'll leave all the settings as the default. Click OK, and it says where do you want to save this. We'll go ahead and save it into the actual file folder where the working files are. It'll ask for any special effects for the codec that's being used. In this case, it's the animation codec. I'll select OK. It's just about done. We pop that up. Let me go ahead and loop this and play it. And there's our saucer going behind the planet.